hi my lovely friends my youtube family again i'm just gonna do a quick disclaimer before i start opening my mouth about anything so my name's dawn you found lounge bar crime everything you hear in this video it's from my own research it's my opinion and it's for entertainment purposes only that said let's crack on right okay so the thumbnail says um about wendy so you you know that obviously you know i can't get off wendy's case at all um but i'm gonna i'm just gonna talk about a few things actually tonight um it's a bit bitty uh this this video tonight right you know last week i said um there was a part in the video I was i was talking about um how some people thought that um like wendy was being protected um from them above and i did say at that stage that um no i didn't think so because um otherwise charlie wouldn't have been picked up and donna wouldn't have been picked up i just i was just, just kind of lumping them all together that no um you know they wouldn't if they won't be doing that they won't be sort of like protecting this case um because if there was they wouldn't have got them to that's how i was thinking um and also as well i don't like to jump on i'm not even going to say the word um but you know the c theories <laughs> because people do, will just jump on in it and say yeah i'll oh, just just it's that it's that it's that when um i think that's just a cop out to use that on this case um it you know it's just a cop out word um which is ridiculous i think to use on this case but now when i look back over that video that i did and um because i do critique myself sometimes not on um our look or anything like that but on some of the information or my thoughts and I literally kind of gone back on on that. Not not totally. But I kind of I, but I'm kind of thinking now, no, the, um actually there's every reason that it does look like now that there is something going on because there's a whole lot of stuff that doesn't make sense now when it when i think back over it and it's really weird you know because um oh god i, I don't even know if it, it was about it was probably about a year ago when charlie was on trial and wendy was on the stand as a witness and i actually said in a video that i was covering at the time um i don't know which one it was i just remember saying this and i, I remember saying um why is he protecting Wendy? Talking about Rushbone. Why is he protecting Wendy? Um, you know, like, he's, like he's, he's supposed to be, um, you know, defending Charlie. And it's it's almost as though it's, it's turned into, like, protecting Wendy. And now I'm starting to think that them are both... Um, don't give one flying anything about Charlie or about Donna. I think they kind of, you know, if they could protect Donna being a woman, then they would have done. But the big, um, the big uh, protection um, I can see, or I think I can see, seems to be with Wendy. And I'm wondering why. Um, now, I think a lot of us always kind of thought that, I mean, Charlie's defence and what Rushbourne allowed Charlie to move ahead with, that extortion and all the rest of it was, was kind of ridiculous. But there was times, especially at the start of Charlie's trial as well, that, um, if you, if you remember when, um, even when Rushbourne was talking to Judge Wheeler, he was very protective over Donna. 
And, and at that time, I thought, well, like, Donna's not on trial. So it seemed to me that, obviously, he was loaned out from Donna. The money was coming from Harvey. Okay, so he was loaned out to Charlie. And then, you know, you can come, you protect my name, build the bricks, build the picture for us all. Um, and then you can come back, you know, to protect me sort of thing. Now, um... I do, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm, I do give myself a hard time sometimes if I don't pick up on something, but I'm not going to give myself a hard time because I, I know that in these videos I've picked up on, I've picked up on why, I, I've been asking the questions, why, why is he doing that? Why, you know, it, it's been so obvious, but it's only because now we're, we're looking at a bigger picture now, aren't we? There's, we're another 12 months further on. Yeah, I try not to give myself too much of a hard time, really, because I think doing um, doing something like this anyway, you could you can really really beat yourself up if you're not careful. So you can't you can't do that. Otherwise, you you never you'd never move on. But I am glad that um, over my videos over the last couple of years that I can I can see in here that I I was asking the right things like you know why is he why is Rashbaum protecting Donna? Why is he you know? We're, we're here about Charlie. Why is he doing this? Why is he doing that? And I just want to play you this. Now, the other thing, I, you've always, um, you always know that I always go back to that um, invitation as well um, that Wendy got for the bourbon. And um, I, and I, I did say at the time where Rashbaum was questioning Wendy, I did say that. It almost sounds like he's um, defending Wendy here. And it, is not is supposed to be questioning her um, for with in regards with Charlie, and yet he, he tends to spend quite a lot of time here building a picture ready for Wendy, which is Laura's job. Don't forget. But this is where I'm thinking: what's what's going on here? Because. Um, he, he really, really does. Now, at the time, I laughed because I sort of thought, you know, she doesn't give a flying anything about you, mate. She's got Loro. So what are you defending her for? I actually said that. And at, it was at the time that I was going on about this, this invitation. And, um, you know, I want to know. I want, I want to see that invitation. I don't. I mean, I know we get. Um, well, I don't because I'm in the UK. But I know um, in the US, uh, a lot of people do get. Uh, like receipts and you know they, they see photographs of everything I don't know if that I know that was put in and um, Georgia Kaplman um, was objecting to it but I want to I want to see that and I want to ask the question um, who who wrote on this card because the way she made it out was that there was a list and uh, her name was against the bullet bourbon or she was asked but it turns out there's that there's this invitation and the invitation then it's wrote in the top um for the bride and the groom or the couple or what something like that you'll, you'll hear it um to bring a bottle of bullet bourbon no nah, it doesn't it just didn't add up for me do you know, I'm just, I'm just thinking that, I know I've already said this, but I'm going to be going all over with this video, I think, tonight. I'm just, it's just not like one thing. It's a bit iggledy-piggledy, as they say. But just to have a listen to this, but I just want you to bear in mind how much um, of a picture and of a case Rashbourne seems to be putting up for Wendy when that's not his job. I'm just going to go through just a little bit of... Um, this questioning because even though we all and, and yourselves probably did as well we we questioned quite a lot of it that didn't make sense the way Rushbaum was the way he was behaving and obviously her answers didn't make sense never have never will um whatever but even more so now because we know so much more now how ridiculous um a lot of it a lot of it does sound, but it, we'll just go through and we'll just um, have a listen. Looking at Defence Exhibit 29, 
does that uh, refresh your recollection that the warranty was under your father's name for yes. that TV? Mm -hmm. A warranty with the Geek Squad? Yes. Just pausing that for a minute. You know, even now, um, we, we've always said, haven't we, how many people need to be involved with this, with somebody getting a TV. But, um, yeah, you know, like, as a lot of people have pointed out, um, £5,000 for a new TV. To, to be fair, it, it would have to be a top-notch one anyway. But, um, yeah, how many people need to be involved in a TV repair? It doesn't make sense, Wendy. It's absolutely BS. It doesn't make sense. But on top of that, we've just seen the Sarah Boone case where um george is like smashing the tv up and and they didn't they had no money you know and he's he's smashing this tv that wasn't temper now but that was all you know they were getting rid of that that was sarah setting george up a bit like this you know it's everything's a setup isn't it in crime um recently it seems to be what we're seeing but um yeah you've got somebody like you know george and sarah smashing um, a TV to pieces and you've got Wendy Adelson that's involved every member of her family um, about getting a new TV not even getting a, a new TV repairing a TV that we all know if, if there's a hole in the screen what's the repairman going to do put a plaster on it so it, ne it, ne it never made sense any of it anyway let's just let's just um, let, let's just carry on before you look at exhibit 20 do you recall that your mother scheduled the appointment for the TV to be fixed with this Geek Squad? I remember that I scheduled it, but it looks like she scheduled it and gave me the number to call in case I needed to reschedule it. And in fact, she emailed you on July 11th and told you if you can't keep the appointment on the 18th, call this number to reschedule it, right? Yes. You can put that aside. I want to talk a little bit more about July 18th. Um, do you recall leaving your house that day on Aqua Ridge Ray around 12:30 in the I afternoon? Do. I do. And you were going to meet a friend for lunch at a place called Mosaic. Yes. But you had to pick up a body bottle of I don't know if it's bourbon or whiskey. I don't even know if they're the same things. But <laughs> bullet whiskey. It was um, bourbon. Okay. Um, it was for your friend's uh, wedding shower that night? They were having a stock the bar party, so they, um, they asked for specific kinds of alcohol to stock the bar. And um, I'm showing you what's marked as Defense Exhibit 32. Is this the invitation that you received? Yes, that's it. Judge, I would move uh, Defense Exhibit 32 into evidence at this point in time. Uh, Here's no, Your Honor. Exception. State of mind. Just want to say, um, he, Rashbaum wanted to move that into evidence that was that um invitation that i can't shut up about but um and the the judge then had to say any objections to george kappelman i don't understand why george kappelman when the minute rush Bourne said i want to move that into objection into sorry into evidence why george kappelman didn't say objection straight away this is what i was going on about last week it's like every it's just everything was even then was so laid back and sat back 
you know, got to be asked. What what if the judge didn't ask that okay, that might be his job and everything, but it's just that you know, when you watch a lot of other attorneys, they don't even get chance to finish if they don't want something in evidence, they don't get chance to finish. They'll say, uh, objection here, say that they'll just say it straight away. And it just feels like Judge Kappelman needs asking about everything. Um and and uh, this brings me back round to what I was saying last week about I didn't I didn't feel um, that you know that there was a, a, anything else going on, but I do I do now, and I don't know whether it's coming from her boss, it's coming from above him, through to from her boss through to her, I don't know. And I still ask now why they weren't all arrested together. And right, also, why does that why does Wendy have to be last? In this little what I kept calling last week, this little game of OCD, it's got to be this, it's got to be that. Why why were they not all just picked up? Why does Wendy have to be last? So when, when I went over everything again last week, I kind of started looking at this picture now that actually when you just keep watching it and watching it, you, you start to think to yourself, every, we've always said Wendy's being protected by the Adelsons, by the family, but I just feel like there's a little bit more going on here. Um... Yeah, I don't, um, I don't think, I don't think everybody's, um, like, you know, when you've got people like um, Detective Sanford walking out on my banner and all the rest of it, I think he's frustrated. I don't think he's easily conned, but I do wonder now whether, um, I don't know, um, I, I just don't know whether this case should be in their hands. I don't think they've handled this case responsibly. And like I was saying last week, how dare you, you know, like do that to the neighbour, Mr. Greger, Mr. Geiger, sorry, Ruth and Dan Markel in their 80s. Sorry. Ruth and Phil Markel. Sorry. Sorry. Phil and Ruth Markel in their 80s. Um, and they've had 10 years of it. And they're nowhere. And nobody's... The, the the prosecution um have gave have given excuse after excuse or just stayed quiet you know um at one stage i do believe they were saying things about all the wiretaps and everything that I explained last week taking so long to sort out whereas like now i think um that's a load of it's a load it's a load of bs that that's a load of bs it doesn't take that long again you know I literally, it, even even if it took, even if it took two months to sit and go through the 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 wiretaps at that time, they've got a team. It's not there's not just two people doing it. There's a team of people doing it, and um, even, I, don't, I don't care. Even if you said, even if you said six months, even if you said a year. But eight years, some, there's something not adding up. And I'm I'm not like that. Like I said, you, uh, and th thank God I did say that last week. You heard me last week say, no, because they wouldn't have got Donna, you know, they wouldn't have got Donna and they wouldn't have got Charlie if, it, if there was, you know, bigger forces um, at play here. But now, there's, um, I don't know why Jack Campbell wouldn't just say, um, right, yeah, you know, go go and get them all. I mean, he was he was talking like last week about um, as well. Not last week. He was talking in um, in one interview, like you know, we've got other cases um, to deal with as well. You know, why are you taking on other cases if you can't deal with this? This is, you know, this isn't to be fair. It's not difficult cases. It's quite straightforward. You know. Wendy's committed perjury God knows how many times. 
and you're not doing nothing. It's a bit obvious, you know, that a woman of her age doesn't get mummy and daddy involved to buy a TV. Wouldn't visit the crime scene and wonder where the kids was. I mean, it's all dead basic stuff. And what the, what you're kind of asking us to do is to play your game and, and act stupid. So what what is, what is going on? There's some there's something not right. There's something not right. Um, and so he he goes on he goes on on in this um in his questioning when Wendy's on the stand saying you know like you was picked up and you know you was spitting out all sorts of ideas about what could have happened and all the rest of it. But what has all this got to do with? Charlie sat there. It's as though he's got his finger in some other pie. This is just my opinion. So obviously he's 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 being paid by Harvey, right? But it's as though it's as though something. Um. Th there's something more to this. Even more so as well, obviously he did a he did a bunk when everything became conflicting as well. Um he couldn't he couldn't get out of there quick enough because he knows that he's out of his depth and he can't handle it. So um but that was also I think that was th there was also something behind that as well, uh why he should do that. Yeah, it was it was all very suspect, but the the other point that I'm making uh, at this stage as well that even the prosecution at then um I think this was the time when we all sort of thought that um, they were just biding the time and then, you know, they was going to hit the fan and it was all going to come out and, it you know, nothing, nothing did, nothing happened. So I think we were all pretty good, really, because we was all being pretty patient, just, you know, rubbing our hands and thinking, yeah, you know, you carry on Rushbourne and everything. But like I said, at the time, I did question a lot, like, why is he, why is he protecting her now? I just feel that there's so much more um, to this that obviously I, d I don't know about. I just want, I just want you to listen to this, you know, like, um, <laughs> Rushbourne's are a lot more astute, I think, than we've given credit for. Um, Again, he, he he does this with. Um, I'm just going to show you what he does with uh, Luis Rivera now, and again, he gets no pushback from the prosecution. He's just left to do it. All you need is one juror to um, be believe it, and he literally got Luis Rivera so that he was questioning himself. Just, just listen to this. Night of the murder, right? No. Nope. Sigfredo never told you that he and Katie were getting paid every month after the murder, right? Never knew nothing about that. You didn't know that they were getting paid $3,000 a month? No. You didn't know that they were getting paid $1,000 in Adelson Institute checks, did you? Mm -mm. Nope. But you saw that Sigfredo was spending a lot of money, right? Yes. You saw that Sigfredo even told you that he had paid for Katie's breast augmentation surgery, right? Her yeah. breast surgery? <clears throat> yeah, I know what you're saying. Have you told me about that? Yeah. Yeah. He told you he paid for it, right? That's what he said. You didn't know that Katie was getting money from Charlie Adelson every month in an extortion plot, did you? No. In May of 2015, you get arrested on a federal RICO case, right? Yes, sir. And you were detained. Yes, sir. And you wanted to get out of prison, right? You wanted to get a bail. Yeah. You started thinking about the fact that Katie and Sigfredo seemed to be spending a lot of money, right? No. Okay. So let's briefly recap all the lies that they told you. Not that you made, but that they told you. They lied to you about the purpose of the trip going to Tallahassee, right? Yeah. They lied to you about who the lady was on the street. Yeah. They lied to you about the amount of money they received. Yeah. 
They lied to you about getting money every month. Mm -hmm. Isn't it possible that they lied to you about the purpose of the job to begin with? They don't even got the money. Where they gonna get the money from? Isn't it possible that you thought it was a murder for hire, but it was really an extortion? Extortion to who? Charlie Edelson, not from you, but from oh, them. Okay. Isn't it possible? I don't know. By the way, on Friday, you testified that you just wanted to rob the lady, right? Yes, sir. But Siegfriedo was adamant. We can't rob the lady. We got to do the murder. Yes, sir. Isn't that because he wanted to keep on getting money every month? I don't know. But you would have just robbed him, right? Yep. Would have been a lot easier, right? Real quick. Would have been a one-time payment, right? That's it. Couldn't have gotten paid over time, though, right? I don't know. Well, if you rob someone, it's hard to keep robbing them over and over and over oh, again. Absolutely, right? of course. All right, so I want to back up a little bit, and I thank you for your honesty there. You've never met Charlie Adelson, correct? No. Nope. You've never seen him before this case? No. Nope. You've never spoken to him by phone? Never. And you've never communicated with him in any way? Never. You've never met Donna or Harvey Adelson? Nobody. You never spoken to them by phone? I didn't meet nobody. And the same goes with Wendy Adelson, correct? I'm nobody. You knew Sigfredo your whole life? Yes, sir. You're like brothers. Yes, sir. You've known Katie since she and Sigfredo started dating when they were teenagers. Yes, sir. You considered them to be married. Yes, sir. Sigfredo was deeply in love with Katie, right? Absolutely. He would do, as you've said, anything for her, right? Anything. He was, as you said, blind over her, right? Yes, sir. Katie treated him badly. Yes. She messed up his head, as you've said, right? Yes, sir. At some point, you learned from Sigfredo that Katie was having a relationship with someone she worked with, right? Yes, sir. Sigfredo told you that Katie was cheating on him with someone called the dentist. Yes, sir. According to what Sigfredo told you, Katie was sleeping with the dentist at the t same time she was sleeping with Sigfredo, right? Yes, sir. So Sigfredo knew that Katie was cheating on him. Yes, sir. And he wasn't too happy about it, right? Nope. Sigfredo told you that the dentist had money. Let me rephrase. Sigfredo told you that Katie told him the person she was with was rich. No. Well, he told you that Katie would flaunt and show off to Sigfredo that the person she was dating with had money, right? I don't think so. You testified that when you and Sigfredo were on your way back to Miami, Sigfredo called Katie. Yes, sir. And are you aware that the state has call records which put that call at 12.30 p.m.? I don't know the time. Okay. Will you take my word that the call records for purposes of these questions show that that call happened at 12.30? If you say so. The call wasn't at speaker on speakerphone, right? No. And you were driving on the highway at the time, right? Yes, sir. With the window cracked open a bit. I don't remember. Fair enough. But it's your testimony that you were able to hear the, some of the conversation, correct? Yes, sir. And you think you heard Sigfredo tell Katie, it's done, right? I heard. You heard Sigfredo tell Katie, it's done. Yes. You said it next to me. And what's that? He's sitting right next to me. Understand. And you think you heard Katie respond, I know. I think. I heard her. Okay. When you were interviewed by law enforcement, you were interviewed by law enforcement in September of 2016, right? Yes, sir. That was two years after the murder. Yes, sir. We're now eight years after the murder, right? Yes. Your memory might have been a little bit better then. Is that fair to say? Yes. And during that interview, 
you told law enforcement that you didn't hear the I know comment. Do you recall that? No. Nonetheless, in order for Katie to know, she would have had to be told by someone before 12.30 p.m., correct? Yeah. After Sigfredo hung up with Katie, he told you that you would get your money tomorrow, right? Yes, sir. And you were upset about that? Yes. You were upset because you didn't understand why the money wasn't already secured. Absolutely. Because when you do a murder for hire, you get paid up front. Yes, sir. No objection. Right. There's been no objections, and she could and object she to that. Told you that they got more than $100,000 the night of the murder, right? No. Sigfredo never told you that he and Katie were getting paid every month after the murder, right? Never knew nothing about that. Complete silence. You didn't know that they were getting paid $3,000 a month. No. You didn't. Right, I know that she will have time to have her say, but the thing is, it's there's being patient and there's being, I don't know, I don't know what that is, but there was all the way through this, and it goes on like this till eventually, um, Rashborn is saying, and you said this, and but you did, you see, he's questioning him and he's not saying to him, did you? What do you know? Did this happen? And that he's saying, you didn't know this, did you? So, of course, he's going to say no. You didn't know that, did you? And he says no. Uh, in, he says no. So, that, in turn, is is telling the jury that it, it actually happened. Because there's, no, there's nobody objecting to it. And he's, what he's just said... I mean, it's like saying... He could have said to him, you didn't know that Donna and Harvey wasn't actually married. Did you? And he'd go, no. You know, that's how that is. And that's how Rashborn goes on and on and on on this questioning. And sh the prosecution do absolutely nothing about it. They don't say, you know, it's misleading, objection, hearsay. Not, well, there's loads of different reasons why how she could have stopped that. But she didn't. She let him do it. And as I say, you only need one juror, one juror to question and say, well, you know, all these things happened um, and he didn't know about it. So maybe you don't know what's going through people's and you have to cut it down. And there's just none. There, there's just none of that. So I'm just a bit suspect, really. Um, don't I don't I don't mean um, I don't mean that I felt there was something suspect with the prosecution. In that I feel where it's suspect, it's for some reason there is no urgency with this trial, and I feel like. Now, now that we're seeing it's being dragged out like Donna's, you know, everything's being pushed back, constant pushbacks all the time. This is the game. So if this was real life, I was going to say that then and say, oh, real, it is re real life. They would have said like, this is happening, that's happening. We need to, before anything happens with Wendy, we need to pick her up. They've got like they've got her for so many things, but they're not picking her up, and um, it doesn't make sense. Everything that I've heard, um, everything that I've heard with the prosecution doesn't make sense. Everything that I've heard with Jack Campbell more recently in interviews makes absolutely no sense. Because let me tell you something: as a district attorney or whatever he is, you want as many cases um, solved. In your district you want as many under you you want to be able to say blah 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 but it's as though the pulling back the pulling back and the pulling back and i just think i wonder 
if somebody has had a word in their ear. There's, there's something, there's something not adding up because it just stinks. The whole thing, there's something not right at all. Um, and I'm just going to interrupt myself and just say, um, it's dead heavy tonight, isn't it, this one? But never mind that. Still subscribe, still smash that like button for me and leave me a comment and tell me what you think about Russia or if your mind's changed at all on it. I had to pick Donna up before Wendy because they got Donna at the airport and everything. But, um, th yeah, that was like a, a, a friend of a friend, wasn't it, through Donna, who made that, that call. Now, if that hadn't have happened, where would we be now? They weren't being watched then, obviously, but said that, you know, they could get that far. There had to be some kind of call to tip them off. But you see, even previous to that, you see, I thought that Wendy looked more guilty than Donna. So why had they not picked Wendy up well before that? I know you could say, um, you know, well, Donna was in conjunction with the Charlie thing. Um... You, know, you could go on all night, you know, you could go on forever. It was because of this, it was be like I said, um, a, a lot of, um, a lot of people, even lawyers have said they don't, they don't know why they weren't all just picked up together. But why, why is, why is Wendy got to be last? And I, I, I still, I still can't accept where that eight years went, uh, all this wiretap BS and all this crap absolute rubbish that if you just think over that for a minute that that is there's something wrong there eight years and nothing absolutely nothing and it felt as it feels as though the only time that they did do anything was when it was absolutely um like pushed and pushed and pushed and i think they thought um i think they I mean, look how quick that they got the hitmen after, you know, everything. They they got them so quick and then they take four times longer to, to get one aid or so. When you look at the work that they had to do, I mean, they had to get like video cameras from a bus, a bus route to, to, to see the hitmen on the road. There was a lot of work involved in that, but they got it. No trouble. And I believe that uh, the investigators uh, and the forensic got all this information pretty quick as well. It's the prosecution that haven't done anything with it. It's 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 all it's all not it's it's all not um it's all not being good to me. And do you know what? Some people have wondered whether um, uh, Charlie Charlie's the fall guy. more or less that you know like not that Don has set him up but yeah like Wendy's obviously I've always said that Wendy set her own family up anyway but I think behind it I think Donna um it makes you just wonder whether she just thought you know like Charlie's you know big strapping lad and everything he can go to court we'll get him out because money talks because that's how they think that's their mentality um and like he's the fall guy but like obviously it's all it's all coming back now and that's why she's striking her eyes out but for some reason they are not they're not dropping Wendy and I think I think there's there's people behind that there's people behind that in my opinion that they're not doing anything with Wendy because they could just go and pick her up they've got enough but they're not and I keep saying it but they're not doing it Right, just a quick one on this, um, on Charlie's new lawyers, Joshua, is it Joshua Selman? Right, and this Jackie, is she called Jackie Fulford? Yeah, Jackie Lee Fulford. Um, right, now quickly, uh, uh, that Joshua apparently is from Miami. Now, this Jackie Lee Fulford, as you probably heard, used to be a lawyer and uh, is a lawyer again 
uh, an attorney, used to be a judge, um, but apparently she was supporting the local um, sheriff. She had a big uh, cutout of him in her chambers where even people in court could see it. And apparently one of the court bailiffs had said like, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't vote for him, I wouldn't support him. This in turn got back to this, uh, this sheriff. I think he was called Jack somebody. So I, I'm not sure. I think he's called some Jack. Not that it matters because it's not like it's not really um, that important what who he, what his name is. But um, so he then through her got this bailiff. He got sacked. Um, and it was all getting a little bit political and you're not supposed to be political as a judge. You're supposed to be independent. So it was all getting political. And um, for that reason, and there was other reasons as well, she was like thrown off um, and like pensioned off. So I take it like she, she gets like a nice pension now as well. Uh, what I mean, what's going on here with this this corruption? Why was she just not like you know, thrown off the bench completely and like, that's it. You know, you can't practice. But no, you can go and be a lawyer. And uh, anyway, right. So, now it makes me wonder who whose idea it was to get her. Now, somewhere, I don't know where, maybe you can come back and tell me about this one. Because I can't find it now, but I'm sure somebody said that uh, she was dealing with the um, with the divorce um, on on Dan Markell's side. I don't know, but if that's the case, isn't that conflicting? Are, are we going down that lane again? That's conflicting. If it is, I hope I hope um, Judge Everett just throws it straight off anyway um he didn't mess about did he with the other ones i mean he even got rid of um alex morris as well he just did a clean a clean slate but in it a bad show when the judge has got to keep doing this because the thing the prosecution are not raising anything they're just like yeah i'm totally miffed with it all at this stage i'll be honest with you i am totally miffed i don't know what to think anymore i really really don't there's something not right <laughs> well i know a lot of people have said that anyway and we we all argue don't we about um not argue but we disagree and we've got our opinions and everything but it's like we're all on the same page with this one and the only people that aren't is like the prosecution and for some reason Nobody's doing anything. Nobody's, nobody's making anything happen. I, I, I just smell a rat with it. Honestly, don't hold your breath with this, because there's something not right. There's something not right. Unless they clear the prosecution and Jack Campbell with them off this case and get a whole new prosecution on it, who can't be manipulated and I've got a bit more umph. Even if they're not being manipulated, they've got a bit more umph and they just go at it. Um, I don't know. I really don't know what to think. Anyway, um, bit of a heavy one tonight, wasn't it? I can't think of anything else that I want to talk about, really. Um, it, it's just that. It was just like all little bits and bobs. Um, <clears throat> obviously, we've got... Um, Charlie's, well, his appeal is like to one side now. He wants a retrial or something, doesn't he? So um, we'll have to see how that one goes. Um, yeah. Um, that's not my, obviously I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. So um, I don't really know much on that. All I can do is get as much information as I can um when i can i did get bits of it tonight but not enough to do a video on it so um obviously we're going to hear more about that what's going on there but i i think the the biggest thing now is just to get things moving forward and um i, I i'm just 
the, the fact is, you see, if, if I am smelling a rat, and it is a rat, then by rights, um, somebody should be doing something about it. Somebody in a position that can do something about it. But um, who that would be, I don't know. I do have a lot of faith in Judge Everett. Um, I don't think he's easily frightened or manipulated or anything. I think he takes advice um, on both sides pretty well. And as regard for everything that they say but he's not frightened of it he's not frightened of pushing any buttons so um but i hope we haven't got to rely on that i'd like i'd like to see the prosecution prove me wrong and come out with something and um yeah just start fighting but this blase attitude it's not washing with me anymore it's starting it's starting to smell now it's not to me it's not just them being like chilled and laid back because i don't think sarah dugan is um i just think george kappelman is and jack campbell just seems to be going around in circles with some of the things that he's saying and they don't make sense they don't add up for a murder case not when you've got a whole family you know and you can bang like four of them away it's not making any sense anyway that's me done on this one for tonight i'm going to try and get on again and do i want to find out a bit more with what's going on there with charlie so if i do i'll come on with that um and that's it guys right so um i'm going to say good night take care stay safe and come back okay bye <laughs>